Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be getting started on a series on Xenon code programming in the game Archean. For those of you who are not familiar with the game Archean, it is a sandbox sim that allows you to do fairly accurate physics. Uh, they give you an entire planet in which to run around. I've done some videos in the past, uh, sort of simple demonstrations of the different stuff you can do with it. But uh, one of the things I see requested the most uh, when I poke around Discord or anything along those lines is the fact that people are terrified of the Xenon code programming language, even though it's actually a really, really useful language and it's much simpler than it appears. So what I want to do is I want to do a series on it, kind of first of all, starting with why you should learn Xenon code as opposed to some of the other options. And then of course, uh, expand to bigger and better things as uh, we kind of go along. But so we'll kind of get there when we get there. So the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate the why. Why should you learn to code using text as opposed to just using nodes or using switches or something along those lines? Well, let's create a scenario and go ahead and show you the why. And while we're doing the why, of course, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a light switch. Now, light switches, easy time. We need ourselves a lamp. And of course, we need some kind of switch. I'm going to go ahead and put my light switch over on this side. I'm going to go ahead and pop my switch. Now, for those of you who have uh, used Xenon or you probably viewed the regular videos that Abacholi has put together, that's the developer of the program, uh, one of the developers, there's also Floxum as well, um, you'll probably know that you simply take the data cable, which is three, you click on it here, Click on it here, and of course, uh, that looks ugly, so let me make it a little bit nicer for you. Ah, there we go, we'll hide it like that, that's better. And of course, let's put some power on this, so we'd run back here, and I set up some batteries for us, because I knew we'd probably need them today. So I'll go ahead and plug that on there, and uh, you come over here, and ta-da! You have yourself a working light switch. Now that is awesome, and you're sitting there going, yeah, that's all you need. Um, there's no programming needed here. Why would I ever need to program something like this? Well, uh-oh. It changed. Now we've got four lights we need to turn on. Eh, nobody needs to program this. Ah, this is simple. All I'm going to do is I'll grab myself a data junction. Come in here like this. Go ahead and link the data junction up to this. And we're just going to go ahead and pop in each one of these to the data junction. Flip the switch. Aha! Look at that. Ah, I still don't need to know how to program. There's nothing. Nah, this is easy. I could turn my light switch on in the car all afternoon. No problem. Okay. Oh. Well, that got a little more interesting. I, um, I, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll use a data junction plugged into a data junction. And just in case, we'll do another data junction. So let me plug that in there. Plug that in there. Plug that in there. Oh, this is going to take a second. There we go. It's looking a little ugly, but that's all right. Ha! I win. Fabulous. Now, you can do this ad infinitum. Oh, that's perfectly fine. I said, if I want to add more light switches, I just add another data split to make 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 another. And you can kind of see where the problem starts to begin. Programming is all about trying to make things flexible in something you can design and redesign and be able to add and constantly modify one time or another. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and first of all, shut that off and I'm going to cut all this out. Let's say we want to go ahead and approach this and say, hey, you know what I really want to do here? I want to be able to flip these all on, but I want a lot less electrical complexity there. That was starting to get a little messy. Uh, speaking of messy, by the way, <laughs> don't ignore that. Nobody needs to see that part. So uh, the thing is, you're sitting here going, okay, I still don't see why we need programming here. I could have wired that. That's, that's not a problem. Even if I have a thousand, it's just going to be uh, basically a thousand divided by four, divided by three, divided by two, divided by one connectors. Oh, that's not that bad. It's, you know, 70. <laughs> Not that many, I'm just bad math. So you sit there and going, fine, you know what I'll do? I'll finally make you happy and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of programming. You know what I'll do? I'll grab myself one of these lovely mini computers. I'll stick it on there. Hold shift, by the way, it's your best friend. I'm gonna go stick it on here. I'm gonna plug this light switch in here and you know what, I'm gonna make you happy. I'll put some electrical connections into this thing real quickly here. I told you it was getting a little messy back here. Uh-oh, ran out of holes. Ha <laughs> ha, that fixes that. And you're like, you know what, fine. I'm just going to do a little bit of node-based programming. I'm not going to do any of that fancy text-based programming. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do my thing here. I'm just going to plug this all in uh, one hole at a time. Here we go. All right, Hotshot. Now you're happy. Okay, you've managed to make everything go into one. That's simple. Now I just got to, uh-oh. So then, of course, you're sitting here going, I still don't want to do coding, but I'm, I'm going to do the node thing. I've done some stuff in Stormworks. 
I'm going to go ahead and press code. I'm going to press file. I'm going to go up to new program. I'm going to go ahead and call this a light control. I'm going to come into here and immediately get a little panicky going. Okay. So what hole is the input plugged into? Let's see here. That's input zero. So this is going to be the one we're going to work with. We go to input channel one. I'll delete that. And of course, we need to link all of our outputs directly into an input uh, like that. So we'd sit here and say, all right, let's go get each one of our outputs. So we'll delete all the ones we don't need here. And we'll just right click and we'll go ahead and do output lamp. Oh boy, this is going to take a minute. Right click output lamp right click output lamp and we'd have to go through and do all of it until we get something like this aha you get something that looks like that which is ugly <laughs> so you come over here you hit the light switch and uh, you immediately panic and go why did it not work why did it not work because you have to save your code silly Ta-da! and just like that uh, you're able to control all those lights from one switch and then you say to me you know listen you know, you've been trying to prove why do we need to learn how to program the text-based stuff? Like, obviously, that was no problem. I had no challenge with that. that. That took five minutes. What's your point? What would you like to say if you wanted to put these lights to blink in a sequence instead of turn on all at once? Uh-oh. Now things get complicated. You're going to have to come up with a way to figure out which one of these lights to turn on, when to turn it on, when to activate it, when to deactivate it, shut off all the lights you don't need, turn on the lights you want, and then somehow iterate it attached to a button. Now, when you see a problem like that start to appear, you immediately get instantly panicky. and You start to realize, wait a minute, I see where he's going with this. It's as the task gets more complex, this is going to be harder and harder and harder and harder to add on to. Yeah. That's the problem, and that's really where programming comes in. It's about automating more complex tasks. Very, very simple things, like I said, single light switch, no problem. So let's go ahead and attack this problem. Remember, the whole point of this video is just showing you the why. It's not necessarily the how, but let's do this problem from a perspective of programming. So let's go ahead and shut this one off, pop this one up, and I'm going to go ahead and convert to code, convert to code, delete. I'm going to delete everything here. We need to figure out a way to turn all of these lights on at the same time. Now, if you remember, we had a lot of those codes coming in at one time. That was actually fairly challenging. So we need to figure something out here. Now, one of the things you probably observed here is the fact that my switches are all plugged into a specific order. Now, the reason that works for us is that's going to make this easier. So again, let's recreate the same thing we just did with just a few lines of code here. All right, we'll use an update. I'll press a tab. Now, all we have to do is get the state of this switch. Now this switch tells us whether or not we want to turn the lights on. So the switch is mounted into hole number one here. So what we're going to do is make it nice and simple. We're going to say if input number, input dot zero, actually what we could do, I like input number personally, input number, and we're going to do hole number zero, input number zero. So all you're saying here is, is the input coming into hole number zero on or off? If it is on, this will have a value of one, which will be a true statement. Again, we'll deal with a lot of the intricacies of this later. If it is a zero, it's false. So if the light switch is on, we're gonna quickly run through and turn on all of our lights. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. And now we're gonna demonstrate one of the methods to do it. And then I'll show you the other way to method to do it. So you can understand another reason why we program. So I noticed the first hole is gonna be hole four and the last hole is gonna be hole 11. Now that works really, really well for us because we can use that as a way to loop through all of the lights and turn them all on. So let's do it. So let's say I wanna do a four, uh, let's see here. We're going to start at the number. Which hole are we going to start at here? The number four. We're going to end at the hole number 11. And we're going to use I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate one of these at a time all the way through all of those, turning them on one at a time. And again, we'll get into the details of what I'm doing here a little later on. Let's see here. We'll need text. Uh, we'll need here. Actually, we can do this even simpler. We can just do I, comma, zero, comma, one. Now, what that will do is that will go through each one of these items one at a time, take input number zero, which is the on or off one, and go ahead and set it to one, which will turn it off. Now, this is important because if we don't want to turn the lights on, we're going to have to create a situation where it shuts them off. So I'm going to create a simple else here. And again, I'm intentionally doing this not correctly. Uh, it will work. It will work perfectly. But the problem is, is oh, oh, we have to shut them off, don't we? The problem here is, is we're creating what they call an extra bit of work for the computer to cycle each time. Now let's see if it works. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. I've managed to take that long thing of code, I've managed to shrink it down into even shorter piece of code. Now that is awesome.
Now you're sitting here going, okay, that's, that, that's kind of making sense to me. I've got some experience. Again, this is the why we go. This isn't the how. So if the thing is turned on, uh, it's simple enough. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and go loop through each hole one at a time, and we're going to set a one value to it. Otherwise, we're going to loop through each hole individually, and we're going to set a zero value to it. Ah, that was easy. <laughs> that wasn't even challenging at all. I get it. And the cool thing is you could just increase this number if you want to go ahead and change what holes are being lit up. Now, this is where the programming magic starts. Now, this is actually a lot of extra work we're asking this computer to do. We're basically having it have to iterate seven times or eight times every single time it loops, every time it gets triggered, which is 25 times a second. Now, if you happen to have a calculator handy, which I do, you could do 25 times eight. That means we're repeating something 200 times per second. Now, of course, you're very well aware this thing operates on the millions of operations per second, but 200 operations per second is awfully inefficient which is gonna come down to the last aspect of programming. And now this is the important one, and that's the concept of refactoring. Let me show you what I mean. And again, this is the why today, not the how. So let's go ahead and take each one of these lights and let's give them a unique name. So I'm gonna call this one L1, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it so each one of these lights is L1, L2, and so on and so forth. Excellent. Now they're each named. Now it's called aliasing something, which is giving you a unique name, which in our key actually loads it to a special place of memory. Now watch the magic here. Remember a minute ago, we were having to do 200 operations every second? Well, let's see if we can eliminate that to eight operations each second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do output number. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the fact these are each named L, and we're gonna use a wild card for the purposes of actually changing and hitting every single thing that has an L on it. Watch this. So I'm gonna say text. And we're gonna say L squiggly, comma. And of course, we need to have some kind of value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do L asterisk. That means go through each one of my, I actually don't need this text business, my apologies. So I'm saying anything that begins with an L, go ahead and anything that comes after, it doesn't matter, what comes after the L, trigger, comma, input number, which is going to be our input. If you remember, zero is going to be our item, save. Whoops, uh, let's see here, output number. Uh, let's see, we're going to be going into output number slot zero. We're then going to take the value of my light switch right here, which is input number zero, zero, and save it. Now let's see if this works. I've taken my eight lines of code and I have converted it into one line of code. The other thing I've done is gone from 200 operations per second to one operation per second. Now, remember a minute ago, I was pointing out the fact that one of those critical things is flexibility. Uh, we're not going to talk about architecture today. That's, that's going to be for another day. Trust me on that one. But uh, one of those important concepts is that flexibility and being able to isolate systems from each other in the event that you need to change it. Now, watch this. Because we programmed this the way we did, we can immediately add more lights with zero consequence. All we have to do is add a, another number. So this would be L9. This would be L10. Let's go ahead and uh, wire that to our PC here. I'll pop that here. Again, I'm not going for pretty today. Uh, pretty could be for another day. Let's go ahead and give it some electricity. And now watch this. Do you see how we didn't change a single line of code? Our code is running efficiently and it is infinitely expandable at the single click. If I wanted to do a billion lights, um, the game would lag out and I'd crash. If you wanted to though, my code would never change. So what I'm hoping you're seeing at this particular point is the incredible value of using the actual text-based code here, as opposed to the critical, uh, you know, traditional node base or running wires basically everywhere and making chaos for yourself. Now, let me show you how useful this is. Now that you understand that concept, what if we wanted to make these lights blink in a sequence? Now, remember we had the light switch earlier? You can't simply make things blink in a sequence if you're going to use a traditional code. It would just be too much work. But with the help of our actual code here, we can make everything blink in a sequence. Let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a timer. And we're gonna make this timer interval of one fifth of a second. So what this will do is every one fifth of a second, it will trigger. Of course, we're telling the lights to go off. But what we're gonna do is we're also going to keep track of where, and again, we'll talk about the how to do all these things later. I'm just showing you the why we do these things so you can understand why architecture is important. So we're gonna do uh, current light, and we're gonna make this to a number. And of course, uh, when our project starts here, we're gonna set our current light to current light is going to equal one. Keep it nice and simple for us. 
Now, the interesting thing here is we can now use this as a way to go ahead and turn lights on and off. Watch this. So now we'll do that text business uh, you saw me attempting earlier. L squiggly. Now uh, we'll go ahead and say here uh, we're going to do L squiggly. Uh, current light is going to be the value. Again, we'll talk about all these things that I'm doing here later on. One. Now all we have to do is come up with a way to go ahead. Oh, we're missing a parenthesis. I do that every time. Right here is my missing parenthesis. Right there. Got it. And again, test as you go. So notice the light number one is on. Now all we have to do is add one to current light. We're going to do a little bit of uh, fanciness here. Oh, let's see, we have uh, 12. What is it, 12, or we have 10 current lights here? So uh, plus one. Oh, let's see what happens. Whoops, uh, current, uh, I meant current underscore light. My apologies, I'm not an expert. Current lights, there we go. Now, if you notice, my lights blink in sequence. I can't tell you how important it is to realize that it doesn't take much to be successful with programming. It's all about breaking the problem down into teeny tiny pieces and then simply building up from that particular point. All the stuff you just saw you did, I did right there is not something I prepared in advance. Uh, by the way, do you notice that the light switch has nothing to do with the operation of the lights right now? <laughs> Probably noticed that, right? You can turn them on and off at one time, kind of a thing like that. Uh, but that doesn't do us much good, kind of a deal. Uh, what we'd have to do is we basically have to design it so it would detect that light being on or off. But that's okay. Actually, realistically, we should set this to zero if we want to do that better. Uh, let's try that now. Haha, -ha, another light switch really does nothing. Okay, let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's go times input number. Let's see what I'm doing here. Input number, uh, we'll call this one input zero, comma zero. Ah, there we go. So that means um, this light switch, if I turn it on, see how it turns power? That's so cool. And you can see that's why programming, especially using a text-based language like Xenon, is so useful, is it allows us to add that flexibility that we wouldn't have. Let's go take a look at another example here. Coming over here, we have ourselves you know, a relatively simple vehicle. Now, we obviously are going to have a four-wheel drive vehicle. And if I float inside real quickly here, you can see that it's pretty much ready to rock as far as buttons and switches and displays. Now, I want to design this thing so it's flexible. So if I wanted to add 15 more wheels to it for some reason, perhaps I'd like to add a power connection so I can have a powered trailer or something along those lines, my code will be very, 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 very simple to adjust. And that is the whole reason why this programming is so valuable, and I can't emphasize it enough. So in the next video, of course, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at kind of expanding things. So you can see my little PDP-8 over there. <laughs> that was a fun project. And uh, we'll kind of get into the absolute basics of Archean programming. Enjoy.